hello everyone and welcome to my channel in today's video i will show you how to build a flight plan for boeing 747 with a complete pre-flight procedure starting from cold and dark without further ado let's get started so in this tutorial you will see how you can create a flight plan like a pro like in a real world pilots join the dispatch office and pick up some documents for their flight these documents will relieve the workload and make their life easier, as you're gonna see in this tutorial. And we're so lucky to have a great free virtual dispatch tool that will create these documents for us in a similar format that the real world pilots use. These tools will be found in simbrief.com. All what you need is to sign up for free. Here I'm gonna walk you through the steps that I use to create my flight plan. But my advice to you is to go to help section and watch this tutorial video. This will cover everything about Simbri flight planning solutions. Without further ado, let's begin. After I had logged in Simbri website, I move my mouse cursor and hover over dispatch tab. This will open a drop down menu. Then I click on dispatch system to open this page as you can see here. I click on create new flight. This will take me to this page where I can start creating my flight plan. Now before I do anything, I want to check two things. First, I check whether my air rack cycle is current or not by scrolling down where the air rack cycle status is shown and it is current. And if it's not, this green icon will look red instead of green. The second thing I want to check is the selection options starting with the operational flight plan layout or OFP layout. I select Lido and you can choose any other layout that you prefer from the drop down menu where you can find other airlines OFP layouts. Lido OFP layout, I believe it's the one Lufthansa airline uses but wherever they all work. Moving down to the units, I select LBS for pound. And if you are using the metric unit of measurement for the aircraft weight, select KG. Contingency and reserve fuel fields, I leave them in auto. Moving down to the other options with the checkbox, then I leave them all checked as they are and this is the, the steps you need to do before you start your flight planning now i start my flight planning from the flight info section i put the airline code and you can put whatever you wish it won't affect your flight plan for instance i put abc and one two three for the flight number departure airport is cyhz the arrival airport will be CYVR. An alternate airport is automatically selected for me and it's CYQQ. I check for the correct date. Now for the departure time, which is in Zulu, put whatever you want. For me, what I usually do, I add to the current time 30 minutes. For instance, the current time is 14.05. If I add 30 minutes, it will be 14.35. Moving down to the aircraft type section, I will select the airframe or in other words, the aircraft I will fly. For instance, I'm gonna select from the airframe menu BMDG 747-400. Moving down to the advanced aircraft options section, I will leave everything to their default settings. Same thing for the optional entry section. The fields are automatically set and calculated for you, so you don't need to touch this either. Now moving down to where the route and analyze route boxes are. And I want to check the route and whether it's valid or no. And my route is valid as it's confirmed by this green text. Now I scroll down to the map section to have an overall view of my route. Everything looks good so far. Now I will generate my flight plan by clicking on Generate OFP. 
Then I click yes to confirm this action. Now SimBrief will generate a briefing package where I'm gonna find all the necessary informations about my fly plan. Now I click on print view PDF to generate this documents package in PDF format. Finally, I download this file to my desktop. The file name format I prefer will be departure, destination and aircraft type. For instance, this will be CYHZ CYVR PMDG 747. Then save. Now I'm done with SimBrief. I can close the web page and go to my desktop to continue the other steps. The download is complete and now I got this OFP PDF file created for me where all informations related to my flight are stored here. Now what I'm gonna do is I will use again a free tool from SimBrief website. It's called SimBrief Downloader. You can download this for free. What this does is it stores the flight plan directly into my FMC route files. You will see the advantage of using the SimBrief downloader when I get to the FMC route entry later on. Now I click on SimBrief downloader icon to open the SimBrief downloader window as you can see here. Now here you can see uh, some information about the latest flight plan I just created. And if you remember, the flight number was ABC123. The aircraft type was Boeing 747. 400 and route with departure slash destination format for instance cyhz slash cyvr this information is just shown to you to let you know that this is the the flight plan which is gonna be stored in your fmc moving down to this section you will find all the applicable route formats for instance, I'm looking for the PMDG 747. As I hover my mouse cursor over the download directory path field, this text box, as you can see here, will show up with a complete directory path text. Now I can locate the aircraft I'm looking for, and you can see here 747. This is the one where I'm gonna download my flight plan. To do so, I click on this download icon. Now you can see here that my route is being saved in my Boeing 747 flight plans. Now I'm done with this, I can close this application. Now I will open the Navigraph charts. What I'm gonna do first is to get my planned flight route drawn on my chart. This will help me to have an overall view of my routing and keep tracking my flight progress during the flight. Now I click on flights icon and then new flight. Now I got this window opened where I have three options for creating the flight. Manual input, from file, from SimBrief. Since I have created my flight plan with SimBrief, I will click from SimBrief to make my life easier. This will open this window with the latest route I have created in SimBrief. Then I click on this icon where my departure and destination codes are shown. Now, as you can see, my route is drawn on the chart with all the routing informations edited on the top of the chart, as you can see here. Now for the departure procedure, you can see here the SimBrief generated route has no seed. And as you can see here, we're departing from the runway 32 direct to Kelno. And why there is no seed? Well, simply because our departure airport is currently in VMC or visual meteorological conditions and no need for an instrument departure. However, I can add manually a seed to my route just for the purpose of this tutorial to show you how to pre-flight an FMC with seed. To do so, I click on departures, then I select CYHZ4 and you can see now the departure from the runway 32 to Kelno is via CYHZ4 seed. Now, if I click on this seed icon, a drop down menu will open. From this menu, I select show chart overlay. 
This will put this chart directly on the map as you can see here. Now I'm gonna pin this to my pin board on the bottom of my Navigrav charts for further use. Now I can remove this chart from view. Whenever this chart is needed, I can go to this pin board and click on the overlay icon or I can click the seed icon to bring this chart to view without overlay. Now for the arrival and approach, I will follow the same steps. I got already Canuck 5 star pre-selected for me and I can overlay this on my map and see how my arrival will look like. I pin this to my pin board for further use. I can now remove this from view. To open this chart without overlay, I simply go to my pin board and click its icon. The final step before I complete the chart's preparation is the approach chart. Here you can see again, there is no ILS approach on my route but I can add an ILS manually from the approach menu. Since the active arrival runway is 26 left, I will look for ILS 26 left. I click to add this to my route and here it is. Now I will select show this chart overlay to see how this looks on the map. Finally, I pin this to my pin board for further use. At this point, I have all my routing, departure, arrival, and approach charts prepared and ready for the flight. For the cold and dark setup, we use the FMC CDU page. From the menu page, I select PMDG setup, panel state load. Finally, I select cold and dark, then execute. Loading panel state in process. This will take a few seconds to initialize the system to cold and dark configuration. And as you can see, uh, now all the system is in cold and dark state. And I can see from the external view that the aircraft is chucked, engines off, perfect. Now, typically, as uh, any other aircraft, we start our flight with the power-up procedure. First, I need to connect the ground power to the aircraft. Using my FMC CDU, I click and hold the menu key long enough to bring the CDU display to life. Then I select FS Actions, Ground Connections. Now, on Ground Power Select Line, I select Request. This will connect the GPU to the aircraft. And if you are not using the APU for the air conditioning, you can use either the air start unit or air conditioning unit, and it's up to you. Let me select, for instance, the air conditioning unit. Now, looking at the aircraft from the external view, we can confirm that our connections are established. Now I go to the overhead panel and check for available lights illuminated on both the external power 1 and 2 switches. Now before I select the two switches to on, I need to do a quick check for some switches and levers to ensure that they're in a safe position. But I need the ICAS display during this check, so I have to apply a standby power using the battery. Right click on the battery cover to open the guard, then left click to turn the battery switch to on. I set the standby selector to auto. Standby displays come to life. Now I start this safety check with the hydraulic demand control selectors. They're all off. The wiper selectors are off. Alternate flaps selector is off. Alternate gear extend switches are off. Landing gear lever down and agree with green down indication on the primary ICAS display. Flaps and spoilers levers checked in their proper positions. Now I can safely select the external power switch on. Nav switch goes on. And we can initiate the IRS's alignment by rotating the IRS selectors to nav.
Now from the display control panel, I select engines on the secondary ICAS display. Then I check for sufficient oil quantity. Then I go back to display control panel and select status to check for sufficient hydraulic quantity. Now, if uh, at this point of time you are about to start boarding passengers, you need to arm the emergency light. Now I'm gonna start the FMC pre-flight and as you can see here, I'm in the menu page. I will start first loading the fuel and payload using the FS Actions feature. I will start first with the payload. Now to do so, the easiest way is to enter the planned zero fuel weight here and let the passengers and cargo loading details to be managed by the FMC loading feature. Now I will open the OFP PDF file where I'm gonna pick some figures for my FMC pre-flight. Starting with the zero fuel weight, my estimated zero fuel weight is 488,000. 848 pounds now i need to put this in thousands units and if i convert 488,848 pounds to thousands it will be 488.8 i will put this in the zero fuel weight line select now i hit return line select key to go back to the fs actions menu I select fuel. Now I need to put my block fuel in the total line select. Now I go back to my OFP and look for the block fuel. I scroll down and find my plant fuel. Here it is. Now I will highlight the alternate fuel and the final reserve. I will need this later on for the performance initialization. And this is the block fuel that I need to load in my tanks. 142,782 pounds. Now I will put 142,782 pounds block fuel in total line select. And I can confirm that my block fuel is being loaded as you can see here on the primary ICAS display. Now I hit menu key to go back to the FMC menu and select FMC. This will take me by default to the IDEN page where the FMC preflight is normally started. So starting my FMC preflight with the IDEN page, I will cross check the model and engines rating with my OFP documents. Here the model is Boeing 747-400 and the engines rating is RB. 211-524G and on the OFP document page 1 you can see here the model and the engine's rating are respectively Boeing 747-400 RB 211-524G that's correct here your current ERAC cycle will expire in 25th March 2021 and today we are 26th February 2021 and it's still valid. Now I select pause init page. Now keep in mind that if you are using the real time IRS alignment, you need to complete this step as soon as you power up the system. Now I'm gonna enter the departure airport identifier for position reference CYHZ. Then I put this in ref airport line select then I copy the GPS position to the set IRS pause line select. Pause init page is complete. Now I move to the next step by selecting route. Starting with origin, I put here my departure airport, which is CYHZ. And my destination is CYVR. Now, if you remember in my last video, when I created my PMDG 747 FMC root format with SimBrief downloader, the file name was CYHZCYVR, which is already stored in my FMC. Now, if I enter this in CO root line select, this will instantly load 
the whole route to the FMC route and no need for a manual route programming. After entering the CO route name, I hit activate line select key, then execute. Then I can put the flight number shown in my OFP document, which is ABC123. Now I can step through the route pages to check if it's set properly. Now to complete my route, I need to add the departure and arrival procedures. Using my Navigraph charts, if I click on type route, I get this window where my complete route is edited in text format. And you can see here my departure runway is 32 followed by CYHZ4C. And for the arrival, Canuck 5 is my star followed by ILS 26 left approach. Now I will put this in my FMC. Now I go back to my FMC and select departure arrival function. This will take me directly to the departure page as you can see here. Here I'm gonna select first the runway which is 32. I select CYHZ4 from the seats, then execute. Now to go to the arrival page, I select index, then I select CYVR arrival. From the stars list, I select Canuck 5, 26 left. Then I select ILS 26 left, then execute. Now I go back to my route and step through the pages. My departure is from the runway 32 via CYHZ4 seed. I check for any discontinuity. My arrival Canuck 526 left is there. All looks good. Now I go to the performance initialization. I click on zero fuel weight line select key to edit my current zero fuel weight in the scratch pad. Then another click to copy this to the ZFW or zero fuel weight line select. Now to get the fuel reserve, I will add the alternate fuel amount to the final reserve fuel. This will be approximately 19,200 pounds. In 1,000 units, this will be 19.2. Now I will put 19.2 in reserves line select. Now, according to my OFP sheet, the cost index is 56. The initial flight level is 360, followed by a step altitude of flight level 380. This means that the step size will be 2000. So I will put 56 in cost index line select, 360 for the initial cruise altitude, and 2000 for the step size. And this complete the perf init page. Now I will step to the thrust limit page. Now before I select the N1 limits, I need first to analyze this using a free tool called Utopia version 1.3. You can download this for free and you will find the link in the description box and it's very easy to use. I click on Utopia to run the application and you get this window opened. From the aircraft's list, I will select PMDG 747400. Then I select the units for the weight calculations. And if the engine NEIs will be used, check this box. Now I need to fill up the airfield and weather data by clicking on this icon. This will automatically do the job for me. The only thing I need to check is the departure runway. Sometimes it's not the correct one. Like in this case, I will select the correct runway, which is 32 instead of 05. Now the last step is to put the takeoff weight here. Let me find my takeoff weight. Here it is, 629,630 pounds. Now I will put this uh, in the takeoff weight field. 
Now I hit get takeoff performance data icon to analyze the takeoff performance. And you can see here, it gives me the flap and durate required. 10 degrees flap and 59 Celsius assumed temperature. And this all what I need to complete the thrust limit FMC page. And if you remember, 56 Celsius was my assumed temperature. I will put this in SEL line select. And for the climb thrust, I will select climb one. All set for the thrust limit page. Now I will move to the takeoff page. And if you remember, the takeoff flaps was 10 degrees. I put 10 for the flaps and I leave the acceleration height as it is. And the FMC has calculated the takeoff speeds for me. I just have to confirm this by clicking their respective keys. Now the first click on trim CG line select key will edit the CG on the scratch pad. The second click will copy this from the scratch pad to the CG dashed field. Now the FMC will compute the takeoff trim and display it here. Here you go, my takeoff trim is plus six units. Now the last thing I wanna do to complete the FMC preflight is selecting progress page. Here I'm gonna cross check the FMC calculated trip distance with the one my OFP got. Here the total trip distance is 2416 miles. And here on my OFP, the ground distance is 2416. And they're exactly the same. Now I will start the scan flow from the overhead panel. And the flow will start at the left column from up to down. Then the center column, same thing, from up to down. And the right column from up to down. Now I will start the flow. EEC switches normal. IRS selectors on nav, standby power selector auto, left and right utility switches on, APU leave it to off for now, it will be started just before engine start, bus tie switches auto, generator control switches on, with ember off lights on, drive disconnect switches ember drive lights on, the hydraulic ember indications all on, Hydraulic demand selectors are off. Engine driven hydraulic pumps on with ember pressure lights on. Emergency lights guarded. OBS audio system normal. Fuel transfer switch is checked off. The APU and engines uh, fire switches in. Cargo fire switches are checked off. Start switches are checked in. Moving to the ignition controls, the standby selector normal, ignition continuous switch is off, ignition selector is normal. Moving to the fuel jettison control panel, the selector is checked off, the left and right nozzle control valve switches is safety. The fuel cross feed switches 2 and 3 armed and the fuel cross feed 1 and 4 are open. All the fuel control switches are off. The anti-ice switches are off. Window heat switches go on. Wiper selectors are off. Landing lights off. Runway turn off lights off. Taxi light off. Passenger oxygen guard closed. The odd damper switches on. Moving to the pressurization panel. The outflow valves pointers in open position. The manual left and right switches are off. The outflow valves control switches is centered. The auto selector normal. Passenger and flight deck temperature controllers set to auto. Trim air on. Now for the recirculation switches. If we are using the packs, we select them on. And if we are using the ground air conditioning unit, we select them off. For instance, I'm using the ground air conditioning source, so I select them off. Equipment cooling normal, high flow and pack reset switch no need, the gasper switch is on, packs are off and if we are using the APU or the ground air source we can turn them to normal. For instance I leave them off, isolation valves are open, APU bleed switch is on, 
engine bleed switches are on with the ember off lights illuminated beacon switch off nav switch on strobe switch off and the wing and logo switches can be used if the flight will be conducted at night moving down to the glare shield i will set to the mcp or mode control panel starting from the left flight director on auto throttle switch armed i will put v2 speed value in is mac window my fmc has computed the v2 in the takeoff ref page and it's 181 knots 181 set now the heading can be set to the runway heading or it can be the initial heading that complies with the departure procedure. For instance, I put the runway heading 52. The initial climb altitude, for instance, it's 15,000 feet. Set. The autopilot disengage bar is checked up. And we finish the MCP panel with the FO flight director switch selected on. Now moving to the FS panel, I select the minimums, I set the altimeter, then I set the other range and display modes as desired. Now moving down to the center panel, here I'm gonna start the scan from left to the right. The source selector is set to vertical position. We check the clock for correct time with the chrono in reset position. Both the inboard and lower CRT selectors normal. Now I move to my PFT and check the V2 value above the speed tape 181 with its speed bug parked on the top of the tape. V1 155. Ground speed display is zero. Moving up to the flight mode announcer and check that both the roll and pitch modes are in toga mode. FD on. The crosshairs are checked with the roll bar centered and the pitch bar parked up to 8 degrees. Moving down to the heading indicator display. My heading is checked 052 in magnetic mode. My initial altitude is displayed above the altitude tape. And finally the altimeter is set to the current altimeter. Moving to the navigation display and D, I check two important things. The first is that the track is in magnetic mode and the active departure waypoint is correct with leg distance displayed properly. The standby attitude indicator is caged. The standby altimeter is set. Electronic uh, interface unit selector is set to auto. Heading switch is normal, FMC selector left. Moving down to the primary ICAS display and we check the ICAS messages are applicable to the current configuration. We check that the takeoff thrust rating is set properly. The total fuel is cross-checked with our block fuel. Flaps lever up, spoiler lever down, thrust levers idle. The fuel control switches cut off. The radios are set as needed. No smoking and flight deck door selector set as desired. Seat belts selector to auto. Rudder trim index position zero. And we test the TICAS system. TICAS alerts and displays are checked on both PFD and ND. And the computer voice has confirmed that the TICAS test is passed. And finally, we set the auto brakes to RTO. And this completes the pre-flight flow.